Hello everyone, welcome to today's session. Today we are going to study about centrifugal force and its action on a merry-go-round. Yesterday we studied about centripetal force, the real force, but the centrifugal force is not the real force. It acts in a direction opposite to that of the centripetal force, alright. So, it is not a real force. To understand this force, let us consider the case of a merry-go-round. Now let us try to understand what is centrifugal force. Why this centrifugal force is required to describe a certain motion although it is not the real force it is a fictitious force and let us study its action on a merry-go-round. Look at the diagram drawn on the whiteboard. What do you observe here? We can see a ball tied at the end of a string moving in a circular path on a merry-go-round. See, a ball is tied at one end of a string and the other end of the string is uh, tied at the center of the merry-go-round A, you can see. Initially, when the platform of the merry-go-round is stationary, it is not moving. The ball is stationary and the string is loose. As the platform starts rotating, the ball rolls towards the edge of the merry-go-round and you can see the string become tight and a tension is developed and the tension which is directed towards the center of the uh, merry-go-round and this tension is nothing but we call it as the centripetal force which is required for producing the circular motion all right and the motion of the ball motion of this ball p is observed by two persons a man on the ground at the point M, all right, okay, the standing outside the merry-go-round and another person standing on the platform of the merry-go-round at the point A. So there are two people observing the, observing the motion of the merry-go-round, all right, one is on the ground, one is sitting in the uh, platform of merry-go-round, all right, okay. So what about the person standing on the ground at the point M? He observes that the merry-go-round, the ball is moving in a circular path. For him, he observes that the ball is moving in a circular path as shown by the dotted line, black dotted line on the diagram. Okay. While the person on the merry-go-round, another person is on the platform of the merry-go-round, at A, observe that this ball is stationary. For him, this ball is stationary and for the man outside the merry-go-round, it's moving in a circular path. Okay, alright. See, as the, let us consider the person on the merry-go-round. As the merry-go-round rotates, as the merry-go-round rotates in anti-clockwise direction, the platform, the person on the platform, the position of changes from a to A dash, A double dash and A triple dash, okay. The position of the person changes from A to A dash, A double dash, A triple dash, just we are showing the course of motion, in slow motion, okay. So the position of the man changes from A, A dash, A to A dash, A double dash and A triple dash. And the ball reaches, what about the ball? The ball also changes the position. Right, from P to P dash, P dash to P double dash, and P double, P double dash to P triple dash. Alright. So, what about the relative position between the man on the ground and the ball? What happens? Actually, the relative position is not changing. It remains constant. Alright. So, as if it remains at rest always just in front of him. See. With respect to the man, the ball is not changing the position. Alright. So we can explain that. We can explain the case of man on the ground. What explanation do you give? The person at A observes that the ball is stationary. For the man on the merry-go-round, the ball is stationary. Because there is no change in relative positions uh, with respect to the ball and the man. Alright? Okay. 
the person A observed the body stationary, he considered the following two cases. The tension on the string towards the center of the merry-go-round and the centrifugal force is acting away from the center. And the centrifugal force, this is the centrifugal force which is acting away from the center of the circular path. The above two forces, this centrifugal force and the centripetal force, they are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Therefore, what happens? They cancel out each other. Their net force on the ball is zero. Hence, it is. it remains always stationary in front of the man on the uh, platform. Is it clear? The tension force, that is the centripetal force and the centrifugal force, both are acting in the opposite direction, both are equal in magnitude, they uh, nullify, they cancel each other and the net force is zero. As a result, the ball remains stationary for a man on the platform. Clear? Okay. For a, what about the person on the ground? For the person on the ground at a point M, the ball moves in a circular path because the force of tension in the string provides the necessary centripetal force. Alright? So for a person on the ground, the ball is moving in a circular path. Why? Because the, the force of tension or the T or we call it as centripetal force uh, gives or provides the necessary uh, circular motion. Okay, so in this way, uh, we can say that centrifugal force acts in case of a merry-go-round. And a person on the ground, he sees that the ball moves in a circular motion. And for a person on the platform of the merry-go-round, it appears to be stationary. I hope it's clear to you. Okay, all right. Now let us discuss couple of important questions for the board examination. This type of conceptual questions have been asked in the board examination. Number one, how does a centripetal force differ from a centrifugal force with reference to direction in which they act? They are, they act in the opposite direction. All right. Is centrifugal force the force of reaction of the centripetal force? No, not at all. It is not the force of reaction. Third. Compare the magnitude of centripetal force and centrifugal force. As you know that, they are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So the magnitude is 1 ratio 1. Clear to you? Now moving to question number 2. A small pebble tied at one end of a string is placed near the periphery of a circular disc at the center of which other end of a string is tied to a peg. The disc is rotating about an axis passing through its center. The question is, what will be your observation? When you are standing outside the disc, explain. As we have seen in the theory classes, the pebble moves in a circular path because the tension in the string provides an accessory centripetal force. For a man standing outside, it moves in a circular path. Second, what will be your observation when you are standing at the center of the disc? Explain. So, as we have seen, for a man at the center of the disc, the pebble is stationary just in front because the centrifugal force on the pebble balance the tension in the string. So both forces cancel out each other and there is no net force and as a result pebble remains stationary for a man at the center of the disc. Okay. Now moving on to the third question. A piece of stone tied at the end of a thread is whirled in a horizontal circle with the uniform speed with the help of hand. Answer the following question. Is the velocity of the stone uniform or variable? No, the velocity is always variable. Is the acceleration of the stone uniform or variable? In uniform circular motion, acceleration is also variable. The only one quantity which remains constant is speed. What is the direction of acceleration of stone at any instant? So you know that the acceleration is always acting towards the center of the circular path. That is the direction of acceleration. What force does provide the centripetal force required for circular motion? Of course, the force of tension provides the necessary centripetal force. Name the force and its direction which acts on the hand. That is the reaction of tension away from the center of the circular path. Okay, you got it. Thanks for watching.